The Texas Longhorns are heading to Lubbock to kick off Big 12 play against the Red Raiders. How is Tech performing with a brand new staff? Which players do we need to look out for? What makes their defense so effective? And most importantly, how can Texas find a way to start off conference play with the W? But first, don't forget to stay up to date on all things Texas football at Inside Texas. Whether it's behind the scenes info on the team, game analysis, or recruiting updates, you'll always be in the know on your favorite team. Subscribe to InsideTexas.com today. Link in the description. New head coach Joey McGuire is looking to bring Texas Tech back to prominence and you are seeing those flashes even early into his tenure. Can Texas go into a hostile road environment and start conference playoff with a bang? Without further ado, let's get into it. With Texas and OU leaving the conference, there's a power vacuum where one of the remaining members can step up to be the premier program, and Texas Tech is positioning to take the lead. To kick off that new era, they hired a first-time head coach in Joey McGuire, and I think it was a great move. He's another respected Texas high school coach turned college head coach. McGuire spent 14 years at Cedar Hill High School winning three state championships before getting hired onto Baylor staff by Matt Rule. Dave Aranda retained McGuire and promoted him to assistant head coach for a couple years before Texas Tech made him their guy. McGuire can lean on relationships with Texas high school coaches and knows where to find those hidden gems in this recruiting base. He's a good dude and known for his ability to build a healthy, successful culture. There's actually a lot of parallels between Joey McGuire and UTSA's Jeff Trailer, and I think Tech will see success in the near future. McGuire immediately went to work assembling his staff. The most notable name being Zach Kitley. And if you're a fan of offensive schemes, then you studied what Kitley did at Western Kentucky last year. Kitley's quarterback, Bailey Zappi, had insane numbers. 686 passing attempts, completing at 69%, throwing for 5,967 yards and 62 touchdowns. It's an up-tempo offense, running the most plays per game in the nation, with a clear tilt towards the passing attack, ranking fifth in the nation for pass attempts. Analysts are tempted to call it the air raid, especially due to the offense's history with Texas Tech, but it does have an added emphasis in the run game compared to the true air raid. But people often mistake passing focus for deep passing focused, and that's not the case. Kitley's offense is quick short passing concepts with his quarterback Bailey Zappi having an 8.6 average depth of target for 113th in the nation and he was 132nd in the nation in time to throw at only 2.4 seconds. Texas Tech's current quarterback Donovan Smith has the highest average depth of target in the nation last year at 13.2 yards so Tech was actually more deep passing focused last season. Kitley is throttling Smith way back in the new offense and giving him easier throws more consistently. Donovan Smith was cast into the starting role in week one when chosen starter Tyler Shuck went down with injury. And Shuck is a compelling NFL prospect, but he was out the majority of last year due to injury as well. And at the end of the NC State game, Donovan Smith was taken out and redshirt freshman Baron Morton got some snaps. In the postgame press conference, Joey McGuire said both Smith and Morton will likely play against Texas. At the time of writing this video, the starter is still Donovan Smith. Smith is a big 6'5", 230-pound athlete with a strong arm. He's able to hit opposite hash throws with good velocity. But a strong arm is a tool to be used situationally. A young Smith will learn when to and when not to rifle it in there but he almost exclusively throws bullets short and intermediate. Right now, Smith throws either the bullet or the high fade ball, and he should display touch more often as he begins to develop his throwing ability in college. When he does take his deep shots behind the defense, he gets proper air, but it hangs far too long. And he has a good group of tall receivers, so he's trying to give them a chance to go up and get it. But because it takes so long to arrive, Smith allows DBs the time to identify and disrupt the pass as well. Those big receivers help Smith because his ball placement trends high, and that works with six foot three guys, but when he does miss, he sails it over the receiver's heads and into the arms of the defender leading to interceptions. He leads the league currently with five. Aside from arm ability, Smith is a big quick player that can pick up first downs or catch you sleeping in the red zone with a QB draw. Often this mobility is a double-edged sword for young quarterbacks. He's not comfortable in the pocket yet, and after we break down the offensive line, you can't blame him. 
He hangs around behind the tackles, ready to roll out at a moment's notice. Sometimes this works to his advantage to extend plays. Other times, he unnecessarily cuts the field in half by running to a single side. Texas Tech is the worst in the league in standard down rate, meaning they are constantly behind the sticks with second and tens and third and eights. And you can tell he wants to be great and win the game, and being behind the sticks in a passing offense makes him play hero ball. Sometimes he just decides he's going to throw it pre-snap regardless of double coverage post-snap. Kitley just has to let him know you don't have to score every play, just take what the defense gives you. Donovan Smith is currently ranked 10th out of 10 Big 12 quarterbacks due to the early struggles, but I like Smith's ability with his arm, his mobility, and his toughness. The pieces are there, he just has to settle in. But quarterbacks don't get a break in the Tech offense due to their offensive line. As a unit, they are the worst pass-blocking line in the Big 12, ranking first in sacks at 7, first in hurries at 33, and first in total pressures at 42. The second team with the most pressures only has 27, so they are the worst at protecting their quarterback by a wide margin. If we group all tackles, guards, and centers together in the Big 12, Tech's best pass blocker is center Dennis Wilburn at 9th. Injured starting left guard Weston Wright is 11th, and he's going to return this week. And Wright's backup, Jacoby Jackson, is 16th, and that's all that are performing at a top 25 level. The interior is decent at pass blocking. The issues arise from the tackles, with right tackle Monroe Mills ranking 26th, accounting for 26% of all pressures, and left tackle Caleb Rogers ranking 46th out of 53 total pass blockers, accounting for 34% of total quarterback pressures. This inability to pass block in a pass-heavy offense puts a lot of stress on the quarterback, decreasing accuracy. Donovan Smith completes just 39% of passes under duress, compared to 73% when he's kept clean. It becomes more frustrating when you see that Tech has a nice group of receivers ready to make plays. First in targets is the big 6'5", 215-pound boundary receiver in Jaron Bradley. He's caught 14 balls on 27 targets with a poor 51.9% catch rate. And he's their guy on the long ball, targeted on 41% of deep passes, ranking third in the Big 12. But he hasn't been effective at that range, catching only 3 of 11 deep targets. And you can toss it up to him in the red zone against any DB with that height and arm length. Overall, though, he's ranked 18th out of 23 Big 12 receivers. Second in targets, you have the quick slot receiver and Miles Price, ranking 10th overall with a good 75% catch rate. And they like to hit him short so he can create in space with an average depth of target of only 5.6 yards. He's able to make plays with the ball in his hands, ranking third in yards after catch per reception at 8.8. Third in target is the field receiver and Loic Fungi, rating 18th in the Big 12 and pulling down 8 of his 15 targets. He's another long receiver at 6'4 that Smith can throw it up to, and he's most likely to be hit in that intermediate range, averaging a fourth best 16.8 yards per reception. But there's actually a non-starter you need to watch out for in second string slot, Nehemiah Martinez, and he's actually the highest graded tech receiver at 6th in the Big 12. He's catching an awesome 85% of his passes, averaging 15 yards per reception and ranking 8th in yards after the catch. Tech will also dial up a few targets a game for another giant in the 6'9 tight end, Mason Tharp, but it's not a major offensive focus. Texas Tech's success rate on passing plays is 43% for second to last in the Big 12, so they can be limited effectively play to play. But don't get caught sleeping as a defensive back because Tech is the third most explosive passing attack when they actually are able to complete. While all these weapons on paper are impressive, their performance to this point hasn't been due to poor offensive line pass blocking causing an inaccurate quarterback. You get the offensive line functioning so Smith feels comfortable, then this receiving room becomes a much bigger problem. The run game hasn't been able to function at full effect either due to the line. Tech's highest graded run blocker is right tackle Monroe Mills at 36th. The remaining linemen are all 43rd and lower out of 53 total run blockers. That's why returning backs Tosh Brooks and Sir Roderick Thompson are bottom half in yards per attempt, with Brooks at 4.9 yards per carry and Thompson at 4.7. Both are good backs, they're just limited by the current state of affairs, with Tosh Brooks ranking 7th and Sir Roderick ranking 9th of 23 backs in the Big 12. Though the running game isn't consistent, like their receivers, they can get loose for a few big plays a game, ranking third in the league for explosive runs. And don't forget, quarterback Donovan Smith is an athlete that can gash you as well. 
The Texas Tech offense has to be frustrating for fans because there's serious potential for this group and they could be dominant if they could just clean up that offensive line play. So just give things a little bit of time to gel and Tech will be an offensive power once again. It's just yet to be seen if they can make that happen this season. The keys on defense start with this stat. Tech is first in the league in front seven havoc allowed. So bring unique pressures, especially from the weak side with all the usual twists and stunts on the line. Once you've infiltrated the pocket, keep contain and get Smith on the ground. It's a similar strategy we struggled with executing against Frank Harris at UTSA last week. Except Smith is twice as easy to tackle due to his large size, with a 20% pressure to sack rate. In the run game, just be consistent. They don't run a ton, so make your stops and get the push. Be careful of not getting sloppy after having success, because both backs can surprise you with a long run. Coverage-wise, our secondary needs to remain situationally aware. Texas is last in the Big 12 for defensive passing play success rate, allowing opposing offenses success on 50% of their passes. Corners need to be prepared to match up with two large outside receivers. Ryan Watts has the height, but Deshaun Jameson is six inches shorter than his matchup. So there's been flashes, but ultimately a lot of dysfunction for Tech's new offense. The real highlight of this team is actually on the other side of the ball. But before we hit the defense, you need to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a US based daily fantasy sports app where you can make college football player projections all season long. How does it work? You select two to five players and choose more or less on their projections. It could be passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards, and more. And if those players score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Just hop on the Prize Picks app or website, go to the College Football tab, and check out the player projections. It's a smooth process where you can make your entries in 60 seconds or less with fast withdrawals. It's that easy. As a first time depositor, use promo code TexasHomer and you will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That's double your money up to $100 for your first time. So sign up for prize picks, use promo code TexasHomer at sign up, and add even more excitement to your game day. Link in the description. The Texas Tech defense is ranked 23rd in the nation after facing number 25 Houston in week two and number 16 NC State in week three. And a huge part of that success is their run defense. On the defensive interior, starting nose Jalen Hutchings is the number five run stopper. Starting defensive tackle Tony Bradford Jr. is ninth. Second string defensive tackle Philip Bleedy is 10th. And in Miles Cole is 14th. That's four interior defensive linemen all in the top 15. Edge is also solid with hybridized outside linebacker Josiah Pierre ranked as the 10th run stopper. And edge Tyree Wilson is at 12th. So that's still both starters at edge in the top half for run stopping. On the second level, off-ball linebacker Krishan Merriweather is the 10th ranked run stopper at his position. For all defensive backs, Nickel Marquise Waters is the third best run stopping DB in the Big 12. With safety Dadrian Taylor Demerson at 11th. And then there's a big drop off with corner Rayshad Williams at 39th, corner Malik Dunlap at 43rd, and safety Reggie Pearson Jr. at 48th of 61 total run stopping coverage defenders. But overall, this is a great run stopping group, ranking 18th in opponent rush yards per game at 83 yards, just two spots behind Alabama currently, giving up only 2.3 yards per carry for ninth in the nation. And they are a good pass rushing unit, ranked 20th in the country as well. At defensive interior, defensive tackle Tony Bradford Jr. is 5th. Second string defensive tackle Philip Bleedy is 6th. And starting nose Jalen Hutchings is 11th out of 32 total pass blocking defensive linemen. So that's good for three interior defensive linemen in the top third of the Big 12 at their position. At edge, Tyree Wilson is the most productive pass rusher in the Big 12 with three sacks, 11 hurries, and 15 defensive pressures. He's an early round NFL prospect, standing at six foot six and 275 pounds. He pops off the screen for his size, and he's your biggest outside threat on those third and longs. He comes off the left and the right roughly equal amounts, but he's most effective coming off the right side. Off-ball linebacker Krishan Merriweather only pass rushes on 20% of his plays, but when he does rush, he's the second most productive linebacker in the Big 12 with four total pressures, including a sack. They just don't send him enough for it to be a major concern unless they scheme him up for something game plan specific. So we can see the defensive line and off-ball linebackers are a good group, especially dominant in the run game and can create some issues in the pass rush. But there is a current weakness of the Texas Tech defense, and that's in coverage. 
And they aren't bad. They just aren't good either. Right in the middle of the pack at 62nd for a defensive passing efficiency. Linebacker Krishan Merriweather is an excellent pass defender, ranking first in the Big 12 for off-ball linebackers. So you got to watch out for him dropping over the middle or even matching up with running backs. In the secondary, grouping all defensive backs, safety Reggie Pearson Jr. is leading ranked fifth. But then there's a big drop to safety Taylor Demerson at 24th, corner Malik Dunlap at 31st, nickel Marquise Waters at 68th, and corner Rashad Williams at 69th of 70 total coverage defenders. Despite not having great coverage numbers for DBs, they still play physical and they will make the catch tough on you. Overall, Texas Tech's good run defense can be a problem for the Texas offense. They're only performing at a slightly worse clip than Alabama's run defense, and Alabama held us to 2.4 yards per carry. Our rushing success rate is only 42%, ranking second to last in the Big 12. Our run blocking needs to improve for conference play, with our highest graded run blocker being center Jake Majors at 39th out of 53 players. Our running backs find ways to make plays, but it could be tough. NC State preferred the outside run, and they found some success there. The part of the Tech defense you want to exploit is the secondary, and particularly the corners, since they are already missing a starter there in Adrian Fry, but he could also return this week. Their secondary actually does a good job of limiting passing success play to play. The issue is the Texas Tech defense is first in the league for giving up explosive pass plays by a large margin. We hear whispers that Quinn Ewers could return, but that's nowhere near a sure thing as of writing this video. We need to connect on the deep shots. Currently, Quinn Ewers is ranked 6 with a 38% completion rate on passes over 20 yards, and Hudson Card is 9th in the Big 12 at 27%. Their pass rush is something to be aware of, but the Texas pass blocking is much improved from last year ranking third in overall unit pass blocking efficiency, and they have already passed the test against the best rushing unit they will see all season in Alabama. And you can also use Tech's upfield aggression against them with misdirection or screens and draw plays like NC State did. Texas Tech is a tough road environment, and they always get up for big games. It'll be important to see how we respond in our first road trip of the year in a raucous environment. This will be a good test to open up conference play and should be a fun one in Lubbock. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support quality Texas content. As always, hook on.